Hello everyone and welcome to another news coolum video and another plug side chat. Tesla announced that in Europe their Model 3 would be coming equipped with the CCS plug. And I think that actually is very interesting for a number of reasons. And I think it's a really good move and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Now, I want to speak from a sort of North American perspective on this, but judging by what they've done in Europe or what they're planning to do in Europe, I think it could inform us what maybe their future plans for North America are and why. So the CCS plug-in standard in Europe is slightly different than it is in North America. Tesla was already using sort of a variation of it anyway as their base plug. For Europe, the transition makes a little bit more sense, especially since Europe as a whole has embraced CCS and essentially all the new public charging stations that go in have to have at least a CCS plug. And with that, though, it makes it almost a universal European standard at this point. So for Tesla to start making that switch, I think it makes sense. But also what they're planning on doing with the superchargers is adding a CCS plug essentially to their supercharger implementations. Now that being said though, again, I wanna sort of pull this back and focus on North America because I think this might be a direction that Tesla is going toward in North America as well. And I think it's a really good idea for a few reasons, but I'm not sure that all of those reasons are why Tesla's actually doing it. First, I'm not a really big fan of Tesla's current business model, where they've essentially fused the role of automaker and charging provider. I think there's a lot more value to Tesla and a lot more value to the community as a whole if those divisions were split. In my opinion, it makes far more sense for EV adoption if Tesla separates those business divisions and continues to be an EV automaker and continues to be an EV charging provider. And adopting a CCS standard, a North American CCS standard, would make that happen. Now, some people have said that you, know, you might have to have CCS 2.0 in order for it to automatically link to your car. But here's the thing, I don't think that's necessary. You know, CCS version two is compatible backward with CCS one. So if you have a CCS two plug and you plug in with the CCS one car, CCS one car can still charge off of it as long as you can activate the charger. So what they're saying is CCS two will allow a vehicle to just be automatically identified by the charger. And yes, that's an added value and it makes things nice, but it's not really necessary. You still have to have a separate billing account that has to be associated. And if Tesla were actually interested in becoming a charging provider and opening up their network, well, then they could easily allow non-Tesla EV owners to install an app and load their credit card data, their billing profile, and when they arrive at a charger at a stall, they hook up, even if they don't have the automatic activation, they can still activate through the app on their phone. And again, the reason I think this is such a powerful move for a company like Tesla is they already know what their ceiling is for the number of electric vehicles that they can provide as a company. Not everybody can be an, a Tesla electric vehicle owner. If they were to open up their charging network as a charging provider in a separate business division, then it really doesn't matter to them. Every electric vehicle owner is now a Tesla customer. It helps with up sales. It helps for future sales. It helps with their business image, right? All sorts of ways in which this helps the company as well as the revenue that they get to generate by having people actually charge at their stations. To me, that in and of itself would be a compelling reason for Tesla to make that switch in North America. But I actually don't think that's the reason they're doing it. 
I think their primary reason has to do with their supercharger version three, as they were calling it, right? So they're talking about scaling up power. They've done a few experiments where, you know, they've added liquid cooling to their current format. It really seems like they're getting close to hitting the ceiling of what their original Tesla plug design was capable of providing. Now, it hasn't really mattered up to this point because vehicles like the Model 3, right, from what we've seen, have a max charging rate of about 1.6C. So if that's actually a cap based on the charger and not the car, who knows, maybe the Tesla Model 3 battery can charge at 2C. Well, you're still only looking at about 150 kilowatt charging rate. But that's actually more than what most of Tesla's superchargers at this point can provide to any single stall. If the bottleneck is in their chargers, they, they're talking about this version three supercharger, but even after Elon Musk had referred to Porsche's 350 kilowatt charging standard as child's play, they later stepped that back and said, well, maybe supercharger version three will be about 200, 220, 240 kilowatts, which is all you really need. But it's still less than what the CCS standard can provide. So if they see this as being a future bottleneck, rather than putting a whole huge amount of money and effort and research and design into creating a supercharger version 3 standard, they can simply adopt the CCS standard and immediately have a charging format that's capable of 400 to 500 kilowatts as what we've seen so far. So it really helps Tesla in the future. And the other thing that it allows them to do is leverage the public charging infrastructure a little bit more effectively, right? So they provide a Chatamo adapter for Model S and Model X owners where they can use the current DC fast chargers with the Chatamo adapter right now but that's limited to 125 amps. You, you rarely ever even see 50 kilowatts out of that Chatamo adapter. So it's really slow and it's really cumbersome and it, it turns the public charging infrastructure into a backup plan for Tesla owners, but you would always prioritize supercharging over it. However, from what we've seen recently, public charging providers are actually building out charging stations at a faster rate than Tesla is expanding their supercharger network. And in North America, they have so many chargers at this point that to go back and retrofit them, it's going to take a lot of work. In either case, whether they're going back and retrofitting their existing superchargers to a supercharger version 3 standard or the new CCS standard, it doesn't really matter. It's still a huge amount of work that they're going to have to do by switching over in North America as well, what they're essentially doing is giving their cars access to faster charging than they currently can provide themselves and giving them the option of eventually adopting that standard for their own supercharger network. And again, though, I think this is a win for everybody, like even if Tesla continues to maintain their superchargers as a walled garden, which I do actually anticipate them doing. I'm not a fan of that, but regardless, coming to a single dominant standard for most electric vehicles at this point is going to be huge for electric vehicle adoption. And like I said, North America's public charging infrastructure at this point is expanding so rapidly with such fast chargers that you're probably going to see Tesla owners, if they had a CCS plug natively in their vehicle, prioritizing the public charging infrastructure over the supercharger infrastructure in many cases. And for me personally, I have been considering whether I should get a Tesla Model 3. And this has been a consideration for a long time because it would be the vehicle that would replace my Volt. It's really the better vehicle for me given the number of miles that I drive, but because of the numbers of miles that I drive, I really don't want an internal combustion engine vehicle. So the Model 3 would make the most sense to replace my Volt at this point, 
And there are a few things that are keeping me back from doing that. And this might be the first time any of you have ever heard this, but the supercharger format is one of them. One of the reasons I haven't actually made the step toward buying a Tesla Model 3 is I don't like the charging format. If the Model 3 came with the CCS plug and 150 plus kilowatt charging, I would consider it a lot more heavily than I am right now. I think even for Tesla, it's a big win if they make that transition in North America. I think it'll make adoption of their vehicles a lot easier as well. It will make them easier to support. You know, they've always looked at the other automakers as though they need to be paying into building out some charging network. All the while, there's billions of dollars being spent on the public charging network that Tesla themselves, well, they could let their owners access if they wanted to. So that's on Tesla. Anyway, I'd like to hear what you think about this situation, you know, what you know about that transition to CCS, what you think uh, if Tesla tried to do it for North America. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and uh, thank you for watching.